After four months of on and off work, Cold Front is finally ready for play. Really, I designed around seven or eight maps, but a number of them were scrapped and subsequently replaced with what I believe are superior versions. Hopefully you will agree. Smiley face. This is the description for Cold Front, a 2020 wad by Eggboy. The coalescing of Eggboy's best mapping ideas into a handful of finely crafted levels is bound to mesmerize and impress. Before Cold Front, I had made Doom maps for roughly four years, starting in 2016. I didn't really get super into it until 2020 though, so in that way, I'd say Cold Front is one of my first real wads. Indeed. Real flippin' great. The wad contains four maps, plus an extra thank you map as number five. Let's dive in. Map 1, Cold Open. The map loads and you are smacked in the face with a visual roar of gorgeous textures sprouting from the crust of snow like a punnet of ominous mushrooms. Towers of coarse sandstone and wooden stakes leap forth from Eggboy's whirling imagination. The adherence to clean, uncluttered architecture is masterful. This wintry stronghold feels solid and real, and you're here to kick large quantities of anus. A sleek and sprightly introductory map, Cold Open holds a pair of secrets gifting you a berserk and an SSG on a lowering plinth. Neither are needed to beat the level, but their addition adds a joyous splash of extra fun to this boisterous opener. Jimmy's midi chugs pleasantly in the background and immediately your foot taps a sympathetic rhythm to the staccato beat of demons being ripped open like a bag of chips. On the subject of the chosen aesthetic, Eggboy said, I've always liked snow-themed Doom maps. It's not very common, but when it shows up, I always get excited. I also thought mixing Egyptian architecture and snow would make for an extremely unique theme that would draw players into the world of the WOD. Map 2, Glacier, Caper. If you want to see examples of Doom architecture that sing, look no further than this map. Eggboy's ability to reuse previously explored areas for new fights is exquisite. The symmetry utilized in Glacier Caper works both visually and to disorient the player. Getting teleported into the SSG arena when you've only minutes before looked down upon its twin holding the rocket launcher is such a neat trick. Revisiting the imp pit after you've given a sneaky archbile a terminal haircut is clean and smart. Others might have teleported you to another area. Mm -mm. Not Egg Boy. The imp and demon corpses give the archie ample opportunity to fuck up all your hard work if he so chooses. Luckily, I managed to put him down before he started throwing his magic around. The icy aesthetics are reinforced here. Icicles drip from parapets, and the commanding stone construction opposite the red key pillar knocks my socks off. The mystery of ancient, blood-soaked slabs mingle with bitter, compacted ice. Fuck me. It's a killer combo for the eyes. This was not the second map made for the WOD, rather it was the third, essentially. Eggboy shared, Map 1 was made first, but the maps following it were made in a different order. I started Map 4 before Map 2 and then finished it after making Map 2. Map 3 was the last map I made. Glacier Caper was basically built around the fight for the Blue Key Encounter. I had made that fight for a completely different map for Cold Front, but trashed it besides that fight. The layout naturally came to me as I tried to find ways to build the map around that centerpiece. Map 3, Stank Dick Island. And the award for the best Doom map name goes to Eggboy. Take a bow, I say, take a bow. Much like a soiled penis, Stank Dick Island also needs a wash. A deluge of ultraviolence to cleanse the demons from this frigid outpost. And you're given ample opportunities to prove you've got what it takes. Teleporting chain gunners, sneak attack monsters, sniping boners, an oppressive wall of goat boys on the bridge, and two key fights, the order of which is entirely left up to the player. What an awesome idea. That little bit of choice is guaranteed to fill a blind player with indecision. Yellow 
or, or blue, which will be worse for your ammo count and anal integrity. Either way, you're going to be squealing like the Scarlet Pimpernel. Blue faces you off against a parapet of teleporting imps, revs, and a bastardly slender man. This put me in mind of that nasty teleporter fight in Swim with the Whales Map 3, set on a precarious patio. Yeah, this one. The yellow fight stuffs you into a sunken arena with penned in archies and boners and an oncoming wall of cloven hoofed horrors, flinging balls of green fire. Eggboy said, My favourite fight in map 3 is probably the scuffle with the imps and revenants in the blue key area. The raising of the pillar to foreshadow the archie and the threat level of the imps being somewhat higher than the revenants made it a map defining encounter, in my opinion. Shoutouts to the fight before the split path, where you're given a rocket launcher to fight off approaching barons and hell knights. The cyber guarding the exit is a lovely way to provoke an ejaculation of all bodily fluids to those not prepared for it. It's a cramped space, Cybe wants to nibble your bum, and if you don't blindly stumble into the secret blue ball in the flame wall like me, you might end up as a fine red mist. Map 4, Hell Freezes Over. It's time to put away your toys, kids. Egg Boy's pulled out all the stops for this grand finale. That starting vista is pregnant with so many possibilities and displays so many important items, your mind is whirring, taking things in. Then you slap a few switches and realize you might have been better off camping out on Stank Dick Island, despite the smell. With the clapping of a hundred cheeks, Hell throws its entire cold front garrison at you, albeit in manageable mouthfuls. It's a good idea to get inside the Bard's central citadel as quickly as you can, take out the Archie, and hope the two wobble bottoms don't turn you into human barbecue. The various fights are so very well balanced. With one hand they deliver a Tabasco sauce enema, and with the other provide you with a soft serve to plaster over your shattered love cave. This is my favourite map of the WAD, and I would hands down declare the yummiest portion is the Red Key Battle, gifting you a pair of flat-arsed flame boys and more skeletons than you'd see in a Hollywood producer's closet. Luckily that BFG of yours will quickly put them all to bed. Pinch the blue skull from a posse of posing perverts outside and ride the lift all the way down to a beautifully rendered blue temple room. Admittedly, I would have loved to have fought a battle in such a space, but the presentation of this room in a land now silent and saved from the demon's machinations, I can almost hear the tundra wind soughing around the stones. The pristine presentation and respectful hush is a more dignified use for this room. No explanation is needed. Our work here is done. And then we step into the portal and explode. Fucking great. Eggboy shared, Map 4 was made very linearly. Every major encounter was made in order. The first fight was always planned to impress and scare the player. My main inspiration was Sunlust, particularly Gear Up. To conclude, I'll sum up the wad in a few sentences. Cold Front is a punnet of rip-roaring levels, amalgamations of the best bits of other maps sporting clean, sturdy architecture, and fights that are neither easy nor unfair. The blending of Egyptian visuals with snow is only a contradiction in reality. In Cold Front, this juxtaposition fucking slaps. Eggboy paints in broad, sweeping strokes concerning the rock-hard aesthetic, illustrating a doomed situation not commonly seen or experienced but one I unequivocally loved and wished to experience again and again. A massive thank you to Eggboy both for making this wad and for answering my questions about Coldfront. You were a massive help. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. As for everyone else, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Eduardo and friends.